Hi guys, uh, my name is Michelle Andres. I know some of you here. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming out. Um, this is Lisa. She's from the Netherlands and she's got a pretty great presentation. So let's give her a hand, yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about what my life was back home. Um, first, I'm gonna tell you why I didn't exchange here. Um, I finished high school last year, um, and I didn't know what I wanna what I wanted to study uh, or where I wanted to go to school. Um, so I thought that a gap year might be a good um, chance to like think about what I wanna do, what I wanna be, um, maybe if I wanna live in a different country. Um, and as most of you know, I live with Mr. Wisbicki, and it's been amazing. <laughs> um, they're really nice. They're the best host family I could wish for. Um, oh. So first of all, um, we don't have states like America, but we have provinces. Um, we have 12 of them. Um, two of them are South and North Holland. Um, a lot of people confuse Holland and the Netherlands. They like say I'm from Holland, which I'm not because I live right there. Um, I uh, looked up how big your biggest state was, and it was um, 663,312 square miles, and our biggest province is 2,420 square miles, and that would mean that the biggest um, province for us is up there. It has the islands with it, would fit in your biggest state for around 298.7 times. So that's quite a difference. And then I grew up how many times the entire country would fit in Wisconsin alone. And that is about four and a half times. Um, and then I also Googled it for the entire United States. So this is the, this is the Netherlands. And as you can <laughs> see, it's really small compared to the United States. It fits in there 237 times. Um, so we, have a king. Um, his name is Willem Alexander, and this is his wife Maxima. Um, the Netherlands is a republic with a constitutional monarchy, and it dates back to Prince William um, of Orange in the, in the 16th century. So um, Amsterdam is our capital. Capital. Um, a lot of people also confuse Amsterdam with the Netherlands. They think Amsterdam is like a country, which is like it's not. It's just a city. Um, this is another big city, The Hague. All of our politics happen in The Hague. Um, our prime minister, the other guy, um, all of the stuff he does um, happen uh, in The Hague. The time difference with uh, the United States and America is, six, is seven hours. Um, so right now we're seven hours behind of them. Uh, so if it's 5 p.m. right here, it would be like midnight back home. And we have about 17 million people living in the Netherlands, which is not a lot. Um, well, it's a lot for um, the country because we're small and we do have a lot of people, so it's um, really crowded. Um, so the politics. Um, we vote every four years. You can vote when you're 18, so I obviously have never voted before. And if I'm being honest, I really didn't know much about our politics. So I had to Google the stuff. And um, so you like vote, we have a first and a second room. Um, how that works is um, if people want a new law, they have to like um, make a petition and they have to get um, signatures. Um, and then they send it to the first room if they approve they can make some little adjustments and if they approve, they send it to the second room and they um, approve or decline and then it's a law. Um, so you vote for the person and then with his party, um, we want to be the representative of the second room. Right now, it's the same guy um, as our prime minister. So the guy we saw right there. And his party stands for freedom and democracy and um, he, um, well, he leads the second room and he 
it's not that he makes the decisions by himself. They all, all of the parties like um, discuss the things that happen, but he is the one who um, talks to the public um, about what happens. Uh, so this is my town. It's right there, it's really close to the Belgian border. I can be in Belgium in about 20 minutes with the car. Um, I don't think you can be out of Wisconsin in 20 minutes with the car. Uh, so it has 4, uh, 43,000 uh, people living there and um, it's not a big town, but we do have a lot of facilities. Um, you can go bowling, we have a movie theater, we have a lot of sports clubs. Uh, we even have a train station, which is really nice because um, I'm not able to drive. So I either rode my bike to do stuff or I do the train or the bus. So this is my house. Um, I would say it's an average house um, in the Netherlands. I think it would be small for America, but that's just because everything's big here. Um, I couldn't, I asked my parents and they didn't have any pictures of the house, so I just took random pictures to like see. This is um, a little of the backyard. You can see it over there too. Um, this was actually right before I came here. My parents um, threw me a surprise party um, and a lot of my friends came um, and family was there too, so that was really fun. Um, this is what my high school looked like. Um, I went here for five years. Um, we, um, our grades are different than your grades. You guys use um, the letters like A plus, A, B minus and stuff. And we use um, numbers. So it's from one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest. You fail a class with um, a 5.5 or below. So this, these were my final grades when I graduated. So these ones were, um, the grades I got throughout the year. So this is an average of all my grades um, from my junior and senior year. Then these grades are the ones I got on my final exams. Um, and then your the grade that's on your um, diploma is an average of the two. So your final exams are 50% of your final grade. Um, so for my Dutch exam, I had a 5.8. I'm kind of proud of it because I was really bad at Dutch. A Dutch, for English I had a 6.1, for uh, math 6.6, .6, German 4.8, um, economy 6.3, history 1.3, so we're not talk talking about that. <laughs> um, business economy 6.2, and then for a paper I wrote an eight. Um, so on your final exams you can have, you can get one five. Um, so mine is for German. Um, if you have a five, you need to have a seven um, to like weigh it out. So I had one seven for the combination of these um, three grades. So I failed my exams at first, but you have re we had re two retakes because of COVID. Usually you have one retake, um, but they gave us an extra, I don't know why we did. And if I didn't have an extra one, I would not be graduating high school. It's and then I wouldn't be here, so that's nice. <laughs> and this is at my graduation um, with my best friend, and this was my mentor, and this is me putting my autograph on the, on the paper to like sign it. Our school system works different too. Um, we don't have a middle school, you just have elementary school, and then you go to high school. Um, so elementary school would be um, until eighth grade, I think. And then you go to high school. Um, in your final year of your elementary school, you take um, all these different tests um, and you test your reading ability, writing ability, math ability, just your basic knowledge. And your teacher decides what level you wanna do. So there's three main levels. There's a few below this one, but that's um, a special education. So I didn't put it on there. Um, this is the easiest one. It's four years, then the one that I did five years, and the hardest one is six years. Um, and then after high school, we have different colleges. Um, if you do the highest level, you go to university, or you don't have to, because you can also go to this one or this one, 
Uh, most people go to that one because you can just get a better job out of that. Um, so I'm probably gonna do this. Um, you can always do a level lower, but you can do a level higher. So if I wanted to go, I did this level, and if I wanted to go to university, I'd have to do two more years of high school on that level, and if I graduated that, then I could go to university. Um, so that's different than here. Then the sports. Um, we don't have sports at school. So um, if you do a sport, it's outside of school, in your own time, at a club. Um, I did soccer and tennis. Um, I started doing tennis when I was six years old. Um, and I had practice once a week and match, a match day once a week. Um, and then when I was 12, I went to do soccer, but I didn't have time for both. So I quit tennis, played soccer for two years. And then um, I wanted to do tennis again, so I had to quit soccer again. So this was my team, that's me. Um, my friends. Um, I, put a lot, I, have, I put a lot of pictures of my friends in here. These are all pictures of um, me and my three best friends um, on our graduation trip. Um, after our final exams, before we got our results back, we went on vacation with each other just to like have distraction because we had no school um, because we were finished and we didn't want to just wait around in the house until we got our results for the exams back. So we went away with um, four of us and then we met, um, one night we met um, six or seven other girls who were also on their graduation trip and then we just um, hung out with them a lot. And uh, yeah, so this this girl, I met her in um, elementary school, in my second year of elementary school. Um, I remember not liking her because I was, um, I was always playing soccer and I was always playing outside and I was always playing with the boys because the girls were doing something else. I didn't, do, I didn't like it, I was always playing. And she was like a different person, she was always playing with dolls and stuff, and I just wanted to go outside and play soccer and play tennis and do that kind of stuff. So we didn't like each other at first, but then um, uh, we were in the same class for the rest of elementary school. Um, and then um, after four years, we became best friends. And then in high school, um, I didn't um, go to the same class as her at first, because when I started high school, I started at this level so my first year of high school was at this level. Then uh, my grade, well, all of my friends from elementary school went to this level. Um, so I was really, um, I didn't feel like, I wasn't happy with where I was because I didn't have many friends at that level. I knew, no, I, there was no one I knew. Um, and all of my friends were level above me. So I really started working on my schoolwork and on my grades. And then at the end of the year, my teacher told me that my grades were good enough to like skip a level. So I, my first year was in this level and then my second year and the rest of my high school career was at the middle level. And that's when um, me and her came in the same class again. So that was fun. And then that year we also met the other two girls and um, we kind of stayed friends throughout high school, um, which was really fun. We did a lot of stuff together. And this, this is my best friend. Um, he, I met him in first grade, he, um, his, his mom and my mom went to the same high school together, so when I came in, um, in the class with him, um, a day after school, I remember going to my mom asking, can I, um, hang out with this boy after school, and then she was like, yeah, sure, let me talk to his mom, and then they remembered each other from high school, so, um, our moms became friends again, and then we, um, also stayed friends. I was in the same class as him um, the entire time in elementary school, and I had one year of high school with him, which was also really fun. Um, we went on a lot of holidays together. Um, this is in France, this is in Spain. So this is my brother, and this is his sister, and they're also the same age. So we always had a lot of fun together. Um, then this girl is the one uh, from elementary school again, and these are just some friends from school, and we, we used to just, when we hang out, we just talk, and we don't really do much. It, it sounds kind of boring, but it was fun. And then, um, 
In 2019, um, our Dutch singer Duncan Lawrence won the Eurovision Song Contest, which is like a contest, um, and, ev and every country sends one singer, and they all, it's like a battle, and the one, I don't know if you know it. Do you know it? What is it? Eurovision Song Contest. Mm -hmm. Well, you know it, yeah. <laughs> So he won, um, he won in 2019, and me and my mom um, loved his music. And then at the end of 2019, he had a club tour um, throughout the Netherlands. Um, so he was like in a different city every night performing. So um, when I went to my first concert, I met her. Um, she, her name is Sarah, and she was, her and her mom were also big fans. Um, so then we went to, a lot of different, a lot of different con uh, concerts too. So this is at a different one. This is at a different one. Um, this is at a different concert. This is the drummer from his band, um, and it was just really fun with all the people we met. So this is the friend group. This is the. These are the people who were like actually a fan of him because a lot of people just went to his concerts because the tickets were really cheap. It was only twenty bucks to go to his concert. So a lot of people just went to be like, yeah, he won a Eurovision Song Contest, it's cool to see him. But these people were actually fans of him, um, so we became friends. Um, and then when COVID came, um, because they all live in different cities um, far away, and then when COVID came, we um, called a lot. And then one night, um, she posted on Twitter, she was like uh, messing around, and she said, well, Duncan, isn't it fun if you joined us for once? And then he actually DM'd her and she, he was like, yeah, send me a link, I'll join you guys in 10 minutes. And she didn't tell us, so these were our reactions when he joined us, which was really fun. <laughs> and then I'm gonna talk about some traditions that we have. Um, so we don't celebrate Christmas as big as you guys do. Well, we celebrate Christmas, but this is bigger for us. Um, so it's on, well, it starts in the middle of November, St. Nicholas, he comes to the Netherlands with his boat and with the people who help him. Um, so they're all dressed up. Um, and the thing is that he um, walks on the roofs with his horse and then he um, throws a presents through the chimney. So the tradition is to put your shoe down there and then you put a carrot in your shoe or the horse or like a drawing for him or something like that. So you put your shoe down and then the next morning when you wake up, there's like a present or candy in there. Um, and it starts in the middle of November and on December 5th um, is his birthday. He's supposed, he's supposed to be like over 300 years old. Um, so on December 5th, we all celebrate his birthday and it's a really big thing. Um, you come together with the entire family and then um, you just sing the songs that belong to the, the holiday. And then um, he just um, drops off a lot of pre presents. And sometimes my parents arranged like some kind of actor who actually came by dressing up like him. And sometimes they just, um, they were like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And then they went outside, put the presents outside, knocked on our door and then walked around the house and came in again. I really don't know how we always believed it because it was like, it was always, it, it, the presents always came when either my grandpa was on the toilet, my mom was grabbing something upstairs, my dad was gone, it was weird. The <laughs> children believe everything, um, I guess. So then um, we don't really celebrate Halloween. We have this, um, it's called Carnival. I looked it up on Google and I still don't understand why we do it, but we do it <laughs> every year. Um, you dress up and um, it's in February, it's a week in February. We get off of school for two weeks and what you do is basically you dress up and you go hang out with your friends. When you're over 18, you drink beer. Um, and then a few days, like the people who like who are like really into it, they make, um, like a, they get a car and they like decorate it. This is not even, I don't even know how they do this but it's like a really big parade and a lot of cities arrange them. And then um, it just comes by twice, uh, twice in that week and you can just watch it. And it's really fun. You just dress up weird. Uh, and as you can see, I've been doing it my entire life. Um, so this is my brother. 
This is um, the guy, my best friend, and this is him again, and my brother again. Um, so yeah. Then we have Pink Day. It's on um, his birthday, on April 27th. Um, what we do is we all dress up in orange, and we play fun games with our family. So I don't know if you know these, these things, but you like put a string around your waist, and then um, you put like a pencil on it, and you have to like bend down to get the pencil in the bottle. It's kind of funny. And then this one, you get you have to like take a bite of the cookie, blindfold it. Um, and then there's always a really big festival. Um, it's called By Free Day Paint Day. Um, you see it right here. Everyone, everyone is dressed up in orange, and it's a big festival. A lot of artists come there and they just play their songs. It's really fun. Um, and this, um, when a baby is born, you like give a baby shower, and then um, you like eat this. It's like a biscuit, and this is like kind of chocolate sprinkles. Um, so if you get a girl, you obviously pick the, red, the pink one and a boy for the blue ones. Um, so that's the tradition we have. Then this is one of the oldest and most famous pop festivals we have. It first took place in 1970, and um, it was supposed to be a one-day thing, but then it, people loved it so much, and um, it was at one mo moment it was too crowded to have all of the people come in one day, so they made it a two- or three-day thing. Um, a lot of big artists went, uh, went there, like Bruno Mars, Ed Sheeran, Avicii. Then what we do with Christmas is um, Grumetta. This is really fun. Um, we do this with Christmas, um, and it's like a grill thing, and you all have your own little pan, and um, you just buy, my mom usually buys like small meat pieces, and you just make your own food, and you have pancakes and eggs, and you just sit on the table like for four hours because you have to make your food, and you have to make sure it's done and stuff. Um, and it's really fun. We do it, we do it by, uh, three times um, a year, because. I don't know, Christmas is two days for you, I guess. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We also have a second Christmas Day. I don't know why, but we do. And then we just eat this um, three days in a row. And my mom always buys too much food, so we usually eat this the entire week. Um, it's really fun. Then what we have for lunch is a sandwich with chocolate sprinkles. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that in America. Um, <laughs> It's, the, it's just a sandwich with chocolate sprinkles. And we don't take, uh, well, we don't have a school lunch, so we take our own lunch to school. And this is one of the things we take to school for lunch. Then we also have, oh yeah, there. <laughs> and then we, we have um, bike lanes. I, I haven't seen them in America ever. Um, Well, they do have them, <laughs> but we have them everywhere. There is not a single road in the Netherlands that doesn't have a bike lane next to it, because um, we bike a lot. Then what we do is a New Year's dive. I've actually never done it before, because I just think it's too cold. Um, what it is, is on New Year's Day, you all go to the beach, and you take the first dive into the sea. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because it's really cold. Uh, and you all get like the hat you see right there, everyone gets it. And it's really fun to see everyone like runs into the water and then they sprint out right away because it's too cold. Um, I definitely want to do this, but I always, I always say I'm going to do it, but then I end up not doing it because it's too cold. Then what we have to do is um, a bike exam. In your seventh grade of, high, uh, of elementary school, um, you have an exam on biking. So you go out with your entire class, and um, you, the school like puts out um, a route you have to go. And then there's um, people, and they check if you ride your bike correctly. So if you like show where you're going, if you watch behind you, that kind of stuff. And then you pass your exam 
Well, I haven't heard anyone that doesn't pass, but everyone just has to do it. Well, this is me while doing it. Um, yeah. And then the last thing is a musical. In the last year of your elementary school, um, your class performs a musical. It's basically all you do in your last year of elementary school. Um, it's really fun. You're practicing the entire year. Um, <coughs> our musical was called All Is Overboard. Our musical was about um, 30 people who won a golden ticket to go on a cruise. That was our musical. Um, I had <coughs> three roles um, in it. I played a twin, I played a secretary, and I was just a soccer girl, I think. Um, and this was my, my class. Um, it was really fun. Um, it's really scary to do though, because you're young and the entire school is watching you. Um, but you basically practice this the entire year. It's all you do, it's really fun. Um, so yeah. <laughs>